All right. Well, we're going to go over to uh, Sister Kyrie and let her go on for uh, the first question. And we're going we, we gonna to tackle some of that, some of that. All right. Well, her first question today says, when the detective told Malia that Chris had been using a fake name, I was stunned. Whose ID do you think he has been using? Who knows? And who knows um, if Chris has been on, how long he's been on the prowl, you know? He probably cycles out fake IDs every few weeks, few days, you know? So it's just whoever he was able to get his hands on. And then um, they also talked about um, in the story where he was stealing people's credit card information. So he could have stole somebody's ID, you know, at the Bristow. You know, when you're out here living life on the land, uh, on the lamb like he is, you know, you get what you can get. You can get it. So who knows? We know it was the black man's ID, though. <laughs> Alicia, where do you think Chris got this information from? You know, um, when I read the question, of course, my mind, I, re, I, I watch a lot of murder shows and documentaries, so my mind went somewhere, like, dark. I was like, you know, because this fool was crazy. Maybe it was one of his victims, you know, as Mel Vick, he got buried under somebody's shed somewhere, and, you know, got it out of the <laughs> And so, um... I don't know whose ID that he's using, but um, I wasn't surprised that it was fake. You can't like wild out the way you do and do the things you do, you know, with your government name. Yeah, you only get that bold, especially if you know, they can't trace you. And something he's been doing for a while, apparently. Like, Malia, and nobody knows that yet, but you know, um, they found out that he's been harassing all type of people, and then, yeah, he does have a past, and yeah. So I wasn't shocked, but I don't know whose ID. I'm just thinking maybe uh one of them. Maybe he snapped. You know, somebody probably beat his tail and he went back and decided to get back. And that person is under the shed and now he's Chris. <laughs> Brandon don't turn into Chris. <laughs> that's that's where we at. <laughs> I really love that analogy. You're talking about some, uh, now they have underneath the shed, like, and he stole their ID. Bella, who do you think Chris is impersonating? Honestly, it's so scary to say because we really don't know. Um, but the thing is, if he's all in her world the same way that Chan is, he has to know about Chan. So that's kind of like who I'm leaning toward. But you know, Chris ain't got that just like that. So, <laughs> you know, he can't be Chan, baby. That was a team Chan over here. He was out his in Chan's picture on his fake ID. <laughs> that was crazy. Hmm. All right. So who do I think that? I think Alicia said it best. It it really could be one of um, Chris's victims. I think because the way I like to think about things is always like, because at first I was thinking, you know what? He's a barista, right? He he works at the college. He, look, he works at the university. He comes across a lot of people's information. Like they said that they caught him stealing people's information so that he could like drain their bank accounts. So that made sense. But then when Alicia said about, you know, him killing people and like being a victim, um, these are his victims. I was like, that sounds even more juicier. Maybe that's what really happened. Because, you know, me, I always like to make things extremely sinister and like I, diabolical. You know, I don't know what, why I don't, I don't want to live in that world though. Like for me, I'm all about flourishing and, and peace and positivity. But baby, when we get dark with these stories, like it gets crazy, right? So I was like, yeah, I like that. You know what I'm saying? This, this Chris is somebody who's been missing. I'm like, wouldn't that be crazy? Like if you are out killing people, you know, why would you take their name? Their family members are looking for him. Like, well, we've located your nephew, uh, you know, Christopher uh, <clears throat> Hanson or something, right? And they show up to Portland and be like, well, that's not him. Well, this is social security number he's been using and all this stuff. Like, so you're trying to get caught. 
But Chris is living on the seat of his, or I guess on the edge of the seat or by the seat of his pants, whatever my mama used to say. That's where Chris is at. You know, so I, I don't know. It could be a victim. It could just, I mean, everybody's a victim at this point, but it could be somebody who's deceased or it could be from the university, could be a faculty could uh, member, it could be one of the students. We don't know, but we're going to find a little bit more about Chris as the story progresses. Next question is yours, Alicia. There we go. Like the way that rolls off your tongue. No, I'm playing. Let me shut up. I told you I'm in that I'm in that mode today. All right. <laughs> hmm. Called and cussed Malia and Eva out made me wonder why he couldn't stand up to those men who beat his ass the same way. Lord Jesus, I know it. Um well, actually, what's funny is he did try to fight back and still got whooped. So, um, <laughs> even if he did try to stand up to him, they probably would have stomped him. Um, and then he'd be in, uh, he'll be in even a worse condition than, you know, what he was. But, you know, he's lucky he just got his, well, it was his arm twisted back, right? And then some soup in his face. And yeah, yeah. That was a good little combo there. <laughs> um, but the way he cussed them out, I mean, like I was like, because he's cussing them out, calling, you know, saying, oh, you old bags and you guys are single, blah, blah, blah. But the whole reason he's mad is because he he's under the assumption that she told her man, you know, because she's so single, she told her man who sent his goons on him. That's what that's what's so backwards about this. It's like, okay, obviously in your mind she's not single. But she is. Like, I don't know. It's I don't like Mike. <laughs> I don't like. So I don't know why he couldn't stand a, well, no, like I said, he tried. He tried and he just he 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 was enough. So they they handled him. Yeah, I agree. He did try, um, and he realized he wasn't the biggest dog out there. So he earned his cowardly state, his spoiled mama boys, and did what most boys do. They called a fiend and cry and cut him out because life isn't better. It can't be better because they will take an accountability and go the hell. Make something of your life. And you say you are. Mike, Prince Michael. Prince Michael. Um, sorry, I'm still changing diapers here. <laughs> um, but you have a lot of men that, unfortunately, they don't, they can't take accountability with other men. They can only do it with women, and that's because a lot of men are intimidated by other men. And it's sad to say that the only people that they choose to provoke are women. And the thing is, we actually have a couple members in this family that do the same thing. Like I said, they will never ever go to the man or the you know. A stronger person to try to fight back with. They always have to find somebody weaker than them in their mind. So it's unfortunate, but it actually happens often. And the crazy part to me is we have people in our society who love to say, Why are women so aggressive? Why are they aggressive? Well, when you deal with um, people like Prince Michael, and I am going to take you back on what you're saying, because as soon as you speak up for yourself, you stand up for yourself, you you say what you're going to allow, what you're not going to allow, you're mean, you're bitter, uh, you deserve to be single. And I, I just got tired of it. I started giving people that work and look at me to hell. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes you really do just have to stand up for yourself because people think, you know, because you're a woman, you're supposed to be soft and you're supposed to be, you know, feminine. The thing is, you can be all that and still not get taken advantage of. Baby, facts. You can be soft and you can be feminine, but I would say there's a time and a place for all things. And life requires balance. I can't be soft and be a Bambi when I have a wolf chasing after me with a machete, okay? 
All right. I'm going to need to get up and I'm going to need to give me some Bruce Lee in my spirit. And I'm going to need to go do me some Kung Fu fighting. Like these kicks as fast as lightning. Don't don't play with me. Right. So, no, um, the way Mike acted was just really, I mean, it, I think it stirred up such a reaction because it's like you got all that work for these two women. You calling them, cussing them out. You're the DA. Right. So why don't you use all of your DA superhero powers and and find Chan's phone number? I'm I'm pretty sure his I'm pretty sure if you type in Chan Kong on Oregon, all his information is gonna come up. You know what I mean? And so yeah, you probably end up calling one of his organizations or send an email to customer service. Oh no, say something. But you called Malia no, because you put him up to this. Yeah, because that sounds like something Malia would do, huh? Malia doesn't even want to be around you. She, just, she, she can't even stand to see your skin. You stank like she don't want you, right? Malia wants to forget that you ever happened. So like, why would she call for these people to beat you up, give you all that work? That was God's plan. You just you have, Mike has to accept the fact that, that him and God are at odds right now. He needs to accept the fact that karma bit him and God was like, go ahead and do your thug fizzle. Like, this ain't had nothing to do with this woman. Because if Chan would have been like, you want me to have my goons, you know what I'm saying, run up on him, give him some of that heat, Malia well, would have been like, no. Like, why would you? She would have been like, no, why would you want to do that? Like, leave him alone. I'm I'm trying to help him to forget about me. I'm not trying to stir the pot. Malia didn't want him. He got messed up because that was God's plan. Like Alicia said a couple uh, episodes back, he got that face dumped. <laughs> that soup, okay? Dunked. Slam dunked in the soup, okay? And um, while he was talking crazy, to Malia and Eva, Eva cause went on social media because Mike is saying, this is all over social media. Everybody knows that I've got attacked. And so Eva finds the video and then Malia had to throw in his face. That's why you got dunked in that soup, okay? Okay. What needed to happen, happened. Um, but it wasn't Malia's fault. It wasn't, it wasn't what she did. So yeah, people want to talk about, you know, why he didn't offer that heat to those men because he can't. He's weak. He's a coward. Okay. Cowards don't stand up to other strong people. They think that a female is going to be weak and a female is going to sit there and take it. There are some women out here who are deadly dangerous. And you go you you go around and find out, my guy.